scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thou shalt take this grace to preach. Thou shalt take this intellectual prowess. Thou shalt take this grace for media. Thou shalt take this ability. Thou shalt take your first class, your two one. Whatever it is, wherewith, that means every time there is a need for signs and wonders, don't just be crying up and down. Remember the rod. Every time a generation ignores you, God will say, remember when we were praying and fasting, where is that ability to prophesy that I gave you? Now is the time to bring it out. That is the rod of God in your hand. We are going to pray. I just saw light like eight people. I saw the anointing coming on them now. Please help them. Eight of you. I just saw light coming upon you. Please help them. We we'll have some time to pray, but I need you to get this. In the name of Jesus, that grace, there is a birthing of something within your spirit, man. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Shagata bakata leketesh. Embrakate parakatos kate brendeke leketa. Ah, there is a rod of God in your hand. You may look like you are ordinary. You are not just an usher. You are not just a worshiper. You are not just a campus president. You may start serving tables, but there is grace upon you. Please sit down. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Everybody say a rod. Can I tell you? Anybody who tells you he was sent by God, tell him, show me the rod that he gave you. Your rod is what decides your relevance when you stand before Pharaoh. Ah. Moses, what do you have in your hand? An ordinary ability to do good designs. What do you have? I found out that there's an unusual grace. Every class I go to, I'm a class monitor. Everywhere I go, I am a leader. But is it really something? Do not make the mistake of the wife of the prophet who said, I have nothing except. Everything all refined looks small. A rod. Hear me. There are people who are too big to bring their gifts and serve in the house of God. There are many people who began to serve God with sincerity of heart. They never knew they would be preachers. They didn't even know the fellowships would be handed over to them or one day they would become head of this. There are people who learn leadership while they serve. They learn discipline while they serve. They became prayer warriors while they serve. Some of them were not even born again when they came on campus. But service. Listen, if you have found your rod, it's time to throw that rod before his feet. And to say, rod, you will join me in serving him. I don't know what to do with you, but let his presence give definition. Everything David had, he used it to become a mighty man. His ability to sing, he used it to write songs. His ability as a warrior, he brought victory for Israel. Please don't forget this teaching tonight. 
There are some of you who are saying, Apostle, God anointed the great people, but there is nothing about me. The only thing about me is that I am beautiful. Ask Esther. Ask Esther how beauty can take someone to a palace and give her the leverage to deliver God's people from the wickedness and the plot of her man. Hear me. Everything God has given you. However, it cannot serve the nations if it does not serve God first. The first person the Lord served was not Israel. The first person the Lord served was God. He threw it. God said, if you believe in me, throw that rod at my presence. And Moses, ah, I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Hear me. Let me give you an assignment tonight. When you go back home, go and write down everything that constitutes an advantage in your life. While you are writing it, the devil will be saying you are joking, write it. If you are beautiful, write it. You are handsome, write it. You are intelligent, write it. An unusual grace to speak, write it. Everything that is an advantage, you are writing your rods. These are the rods that God will use to do mighty things. Leadership ability, write it. You found out there is a prophetic grace within you. Don't let anybody despise you. Refined or not, just write it. You are a prophetic worshiper. Every time you lift up that voice, something happens. Write it down. Hear me, listen. Let me teach you what you are doing. The mystery of what you will be doing is found in Philemon 1 verse 6. It says that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You must acknowledge every good thing. You have acknowledged all the bad things that are in you. That the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. Sit down, let's make progress. So the season of preparation affords you the opportunity to number one, to know God, to discover God. Number two, to know yourself. Number three, to find that rod in your hand, your giftings and your ability. Number four, very quickly, you discover and receive your assignment during these periods of preparation. The assignment that will represent the mandate of your life comes during the period of preparation assignments can be discovered and assignments can be received assignments can be discovered if you are David you may not receive your assignment you may discover it as you are taking food David write it for reference we may not have the time to read as we see in the life of David first Samuel chapter 17 when you read from verse 17 to 52, David was sent to go and give his brothers food because they were in the battleground. That was when he went and he saw this beast roaring. And he said, what is the meaning of this? The nation of Israel were all scared, including King Saul. And he said, listen, I am able to take this guy. They said, who brought this stupid boy to the battlefield now? And he said, no, 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 no. Don't mock me. I have discovered the rod in my hand. While I was in the wilderness, I was not just tending sheep. I, I went to tend sheep, but in tending sheep, I discovered I had the ability to kill anything and listen to me. If you allow me to use my rod. When he used that rod, he brought Goliath down and that began the journey that would end up leading him to become the king of Israel. Can I tell you this? You must trust God for grace to find your place in destiny. 
Stop saying people don't like me. Nobody is pursuing me. Nobody will look for you for nothing until you find your place. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. How about Joseph? If you are Joseph, you will not only discover your call, you will receive it. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 3. Remember the story, the story is 3 to 11. Genesis 37 from 3 to 11. When the young boy went to go and sleep, the Bible says the father gave him a coat of many colors. And then verse 4, let's see how far we can go. That when they saw that the father loved him, they could not speak to him. They started getting angry with him. Five. He said that he dreamed a dream. Everybody said dream the dream. Destiny can open up to you in a dream. He dreamed a dream. And when he told his brethren, they hated him the more. Verse 6. What was the dream? Let's go to verse 7. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Can you imagine that? And the brethren said, so you are going to reign over us? Will you have dominion over us? They hated him the more. And you would think that would be the end of it, verse 9. We are reading to 11. He had yet another dream. Be careful when you dream the same thing again. Destiny is speaking to you. I went to bed and I saw myself on a crusade ground. Healing the sick and doing many things. I shrugged it off. 200 level. That dream has come again. That is destiny knocking at your door. Are we together? Very important. If you are Jeremiah, as we saw in chapter 1 of Jeremiah from verse 5 to 12. God will come to you and give you that unique revelation that you have been ordained to be a prophet even unto the nations. Don't forget what we are discussing. The fourth thing that happens during your season of preparation is that you discover or you receive your assignment. Listen, if you graduate from school with only a degree certificate, you did not maximize your stay. You should graduate on one hand with your degree certificate on another hand with a clear blueprint about your destiny now you are a graduate indeed there are many people who hated god while they were on campus and they thought everybody who loved god was a nuisance to civilization some of them till today don't have jobs till today all that they had failed them all that they have is a rod a rod with no presence a rod with no glory I can tell you with all humility, I have seen people today who you would see many years ago and almost think that they will be champions within one year. Can I tell you, if the Lord does not build a house, the laborers labor but in vain. If the Lord does not watch over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. He said it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. It is only God that can give his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. The pursuit of God should never be seen as a nuisance to any other pursuit. No. In the beginning, God. Are we together? Number five. Your season of preparation. What is the final thing that is expected when you are in that season? You build capacity and prepare for destiny the fifth thing that you do is you build capacity and prepare for destiny your season of preparation is not a time for manifestation you have an assignment under god to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity let me tell you this i remember Many years ago, I would have a rechargeable, this rechargeable lantern. Most of what we did with our money was to buy food and tapes. That's it. Volumes and volumes. And when, when Pastor Dele was talking about borrowing things, I was just laughing. Because those times you would borrow books, 
borrow tapes. The moment you looked at a young man, the first thing you were looking at was his hands, not his watch. What book are you carrying? Wow. Who wrote this one? You will collect it immediately and plead for three days because it's not your own. So you don't have the luxury of keeping it and waking up. You finish that very quickly and submit it. Can I tell you, if you turn aside in the day of battle, it's because your strength is small. For someone, this is a prophetic word for you. You are in a season of preparation. Please build capacity. When you build capacity, you don't build capacity on stage. You take out time. That is the time to hide yourself behind the veil. That is the time to pray when others are sleeping. That is the time to fast. You will not die. Capacity. That is the time to learn scripture. Discipline yourself. Hold on to the horns of the altar. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of learning. Any useful information that can help you. You find a book on leadership. That's your opportunity to read it. Why? Because someday God is going to be trusting you with a global ministry. And it will take more than anointing to run that ministry. You need to understand what it takes. Oh, I don't know so much about relationships. You find a book on relationships. How to keep people, how to have great friends and great associations. You now read it. You are building capacity. Look up, please. Jesus spent 33 and a half years on earth. You can break that, those 33 and a half years into four compartments. There's no time to teach it this night. But do you know that a major part of Jesus' life was not spent doing ministry. It was spent preparing for ministry. From age 12, he was already in the temple. And till age 30, when he came to be baptized and ordained by John, and he used three and a half years. Look at the ratio of preparation to manifestation. 12, 30 minus 12 is 18 years at least. 18 solid years of preparation. How about the apostles? From the time he called them as disciples, he kept mentoring and building them, not impartation. Look at the ratio of teaching to impartation. Three years to one night. Impartation will not profit you much if your mind is not full of useful information. It is the level of your transformation and the quality of information you have that gives the power upon you credence. There is a way you can be, help them please. There is a way that you can be anointed. You will look like you are a fake prophet even though you are genuine. Why? Because the level of intellectual soundness, spiritual soundness that will help you maneuver the anointing in a scriptural way is not there. There are many genuine people who look like devils, not because they are bad, but because they did not take out time to invest in knowledge. There is no problem with the oil. The problem is the pot. The oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make great oil look small. It's time to borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Listen, for some of you, after tonight, just pause a bit with all these buying shoes and hair and all of that. Go to a bookstore and say, for God's sake, may I be fair to my destiny and my children and my children's children. You buy the truth and you sell it not. You can't have a room full of clothes and shoes and you have one small Gideon's International Bible that was given you as a gift. That only has a New Testament. They gave those things to encourage sinners to come to the saving knowledge of God. You that wants to now lead a church, who will sit down with you when they are all better than you? Let's be very honest. There is a level of leadership that is leadership by results. find somewhere to stop season of preparation can I tell you run away from anybody who does not have a history of this season of preparation I don't care how great I don't care how mighty if you cannot find a track record of a season of preparation something is faulty with that pattern you don't have to fight you don't have to condemn you don't have to cause trouble but I can tell you the moment your structure is not built on this pattern, something will eventually happen. 
that which I tell you in the secret place that is what you will declare upon the mountain top are we together you discover God and you know him you discover yourself you discover your giftings and your abilities you discover your place in life and destiny then you now begin to build capacity refining your gifts now is the time if you need to go for training go whether spiritual or secular stretch yourself to the limit so that you are not a workman that needs to stand in shame angry with people and there are many people who miss these seasons they were laughing at those who were preparing it took over 100 years to build the ark that saved the people for over 40 it was for 40 40 days huh? thereabout rain that was coming for 40 days caused a lifetime disaster and yet it took over 100 years to build that ark everybody say preparation can I tell you, Lamentation chapter 3, I think, verse 27 or so, it says, it is good for a man to bear his yoke in his youth. Destiny is time targeted. Every time is not convenient. If you know how to play football at 80, you will play in your house alone. No matter how professional, even if it is true that you are greater than the greatest footballer, you just don't have that advantage. So then teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart on to wisdom. Let me introduce the second season and then we'll wrap up for tonight. We'll take the third together with the impartation probably tomorrow. The second season in your life, are you ready for it? It's called the season of testing or proving. I told you there are three seasons in your faith adventure. Number one, the season of preparation. I listed for you the five things that must be captured in this season so that if you know you are in your season of preparation right now you go back and do this as a checklist what am I missing ah, I love God but I've not discovered myself I need to do it fast and in a strange way God seems to program the growth process of many to match the duration of their stay on campus so that if you start seeking God well by the time you are leaving, you will not live in shame because there are certain atmospheres and opportunities you may not easily find again. For instance, brethren praying all the time, even when you are going down spiritually, you are strolling around somewhere and you see people praying, the Holy Ghost will use their prayer to say, but this is not our agreement. 100 level, this was what happened in 300 level. You can quickly repent and get back. But you will get to a place, a, a world out there where even in your backsliding state, you are the most spiritual person. Please write this, the season of preparation. We have to wrap up. 1 Samuel 17 from verse 33 to 37. And then we are going to pray. Has God spoken to someone tonight? 1 Samuel 17, 33. We'll read to 37, and then that does it for tonight. Now watch this. Again, Saul and David. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against these Philistines to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying, this man has prepared for battle. He's not strange. You are a young man who is just starting. David is about to correct Saul. Next verse. We're reading 37. And David said unto Saul, listen carefully. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. 35. And I went out after him and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by the bird and smote him and slew him two more verses and thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised philistine shall be as one of them let me explain to you what this means when he was killing the lion he did not know that that was just a trial a preparation because there is a real Goliath you would kill. 
when he killed the lion nobody clapped when he killed the bear nobody knew but when he killed Goliath all Israel clapped your season of testing and preparation is where God will stretch you and test the purity of your heart you will be doing great God will give you assignments to do mighty things in the spirit and yet there will not seem to be any reward system God can give you an assignment to pray for a man of God you do not know for one month fasting for him and yet you are not permitted to discuss it with anybody so how do they know I am spiritual God said it is between me and you that is a season of testing where you can go for a program and God will use you mightily healings and miracles and the next time you will hear in church that they are looking for an usher and God will say you that is your position and you say God I thought we we're about to start ministry he says you go and be that usher can I tell you every time your spiritual experience starts humiliating you you have entered a season of testing the assignment of testing is to purify your motif please listen this is a very prophetic teaching go and get this teaching and sit down with it as a retreat follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise seasons let me tell you this there was a time in my life where I prayed and fasted I was going for a program it started raining and I made up my mind the people were hungry and ready to receive it was not too far from where I was living and I stood there in the rain I would refuse that program or go you know it was all within my power but I made up my mind that I was not just going to let things go like that I remember going out in that rain with my Bible as the rain was pouring on me I was going I said Lord I love you with all my heart I'm not doing this because I'm looking for a name I sincerely want to see your people blessed nobody knew Joshua Selman nobody was going to give me anything do you know when I got to the church there was no seat for me they were already jumping preparing to act drama it was when they told them I had come that they quickly shifted me in and then they now shifted a few people in front and said I should sit here and then after drama of over 45 minutes they sang they jumped they enjoyed when it was time to come up they just pass a little paper and say please I have 15 minutes I should just manage it and round up you can be angry and say do you know how many days I fasted for this meeting seasons of testing beware of offense when the anointing starts speaking sometimes God allows certain things to happen to prune you you may think you are going to be the president of the fellowship suddenly they will say you are the chief protocol and you say what kind of thing is this I was already traveling and going to preach in youth meetings and preach in vigils and when they were looking for a music director that time in FCS the people were even afraid they said no 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 how, how are we going to tell this guy to be music director this is somebody who is teaching us and I remember when they called and said they are looking for a music director the Holy Spirit told me you will be the music director I told them I said with all joy if he's to serve my king I will serve him the guy who was going to be the music director for the band because the choir the main choir was different from the band he refused to accept the position because I was the one teaching him it's like a father and a son now because of the fellowship now has a position I told him I said serve with honor when we are outside of that circle you can do all of this but within this time you must serve God and God sees my heart I serve with all my heart are you learning now when you are too big to be tested and proven then you are too small to be to be a great vessel that God will use many people have aborted many people did well in the season of preparation but when they got to the season of testing offense and pride and anger they said is it that this man Abba, I'm in this fellowship this guy that is preaching we are all seeing that he's preaching nonsense and I'm here seated what is the meaning of this and God says sit down and make sure you come to church early and you sit quietly there then when they want to use an example they will now use you as an example they will bring somebody else who just got born again one year and now come to act drama and maybe a comedian or somebody who is joking he will now call you out and use you up for an example and you'll be like my god
let me tell you this when you read Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 13 down Deuteronomy 8 from 13 to 18 the Lord began to admonish them to tell them why they passed through everything they passed through he said to prove them so that in the end he will bless them we are going to wrap up with this tomorrow will take the last season please do not miss the morning session because we may not have time for any prayers and impartation tonight but we'll use that opportunity tomorrow even though I will still speak over your life my time is up listen very carefully ask Pastor Dele Dr. Dan every other man of God who God is using here whether here or in the congregation they will nod their head to everything I've said because there is a parallel of such seasons in their lives you can know ah, even if you do not call it by the names I have given you will know that this is what God was achieving can I tell you some of you you are in this very season right now the season of preparation Satan wants to distract you God is shutting you away from many distractions and you are feeling antisocial and even feeling insulted can I tell you do not regret it you never fail with God you can fail alone but you and God cannot fail together I believe that the next Pastor Dele's, the next great men and women, Reinhard Bonkes, T.L. Osborne's, are scattered within this place, but claiming a man's status in the spirit without submitting to the precepts that brought the person there is only flattering yourself. He said, if you are children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. Hallelujah. My call for you tonight, therefore, is to know that 25 years is not just the passage of time. 25 years is a capture of history to preserve for the generations to come. That when they say, what did you do with God that made him to covenant with himself that you will last? Let me tell you the truth. One of the blessings of working with God is longevity of whatever you represent. Go and read your Bible. Those who walk with God, what they stand for, never dies. Even if you are able, though dead, you will yet be speaking. One of the signature blessings that come upon a man who truly walks with God is that God immortalizes the impact of that man. So that even when you are long gone, today Reinhard Bonke is long gone. Today T.L. Osborne is long gone. Today Billy Graham is gone. Today, all these great men have gone. Miles Munro, all of them gone. But they are still alive. Alive in us, alive in books, and alive in time. We can choose any one of them. Whether you find us, find books, or look through time, you will still find their works with God. As a roadmap for you to find a great destiny. We are going to spend two minutes. If I spend two minutes with us praying, will that be fine? In the next two minutes, please don't be distracted. No moving up and down. Just find a corner and you are going to pray. Hold on to the horns of the altar and cry to the God of heaven. Father, I will not abort destiny. I obtain grace to maximize this season of preparation. Someone is praying. Shkata barakata brenda gebereka tosko to brenda gedela kata shanes kabira sozo pakatos embra katos kade balash shada brenda gates kate baratash embra kata baratos koto badash krata kata barakata bakatos koto pakate menda baratos kata brenda kata barakatos koto prakate pray lekate barakatos koto brenda gete balata. Grace to seek you. Grace to press. Grace to press. Grace to press. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and setting for the things that are before me, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. 
looking up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame one more minute someone is praying I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and greatness I said before you the next 25 years of an impactful life or the next 25 years full of regret and pain and shame hallelujah one last prayer point lord take away destiny stealers take away distraction listen it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us lord cut away distraction from my life someone go ahead and pray excessive use of social media that is not for the profiting of your spirit that may be your issue for some of you relationships and friends that are not adding up to your spiritual progress for some of you ungodly media content and consumptions that eat up the health of your spirit man for some of you prayerlessness for some of you wordlessness no prayer no fasting for some of you pride and vain glory i am a pastor i am an apostle i am a prophet i am this and that for some of you dishonor dishonor to your superiors spiritually dishonor to fathers dishonor to principles in the name of jesus please can i give you let me give you an assignment tonight i want you at the request of your pastor is a personal assignment at least between this night and tomorrow morning please spend choose any one hour whether it's from 11 to 12 12 to 1 choose any one hour and spend time alone doing three things number one praying in the spirit don't make any prayer request don't forget about uh, tea and bread leave all that one you are praying in the spirit get an atmosphere of worship you can go online and download anything or find someone get a tape playing something and pray in the spirit write out all these things the tools for your destiny some of you notebooks that the holy ghost revealed things for you go and look for them this night all those old notebooks you have forgotten gather them tonight some of you may need to repent before god personally and say lord my life is not the way it is i can't keep lying and pretending i don't care whether you're a president whether you're a pastor that's not what i'm asking you stay with god and flog it with destiny this night so that by the time you are returning tomorrow you are returning as an enlarged vessel ready to receive are we okay on that may the lord bless you and reveal himself to you over this campus and over this city we release angelic encounters tonight for some of you you will go to bed tonight and the blueprint of your destiny will be opened up to you in the name of jesus christ every confusion around your life it comes to a permanent end tonight for some of you as you pray and spend time with god you will encounter strange anointings tonight mighty dreams and revelations that connect you to your destiny in the name of jesus christ put your hands together for jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins 
incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.